Alright, so I already went over Higgins, so we're going to go over Denzel Mims now. Uh, he's 6'3", 207. Um, all these are combine measurements. Uh, 40, 4, 3, 8, tied for third among receivers. Vertical, 30 and a half, was 10th. Three cone, 6, 6, 6, uh, was first. His 20 yard shuttle was a 4, 4, 3, which was 16th. And his broad jump was 131 inches, which was tied for fourth. So in route running, I think he's a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, cause he does have a very large, you know, length and just a long stride to him. He does have the track background, so that helps him generate more vertical push in the deeper routes and I think he does well to initially you know separate and kind of leverage to maintain with his frame and positioning um I do think he has the ability to sink his hips and you know to cut off momentum to come back to the quarterback when working back to him in those kinds of situations where that's necessary but at times he's very upright and that kind of affects his ability to decelerate and accelerate at times and i think he's explosive when working soft angles and sets in his space with his focus on the quarterback which is nice he kind of just he'll find those open spots and then he'll kind of just present himself nicely and i do think he tends to kind of lean or kind of like leak towards space that can you know kind of disrupt the route distribution between you know, timing of this the throw and where the zone defenders are. Sometimes that can be a little bit of an issue. Uh, release. Um, I do think he's quite promising in this area. Um, I think he's able to manipulate space and his cadence and footwork as well to generate kind of just the angles that he wants down the field. Um, he doesn't fear the jabs. Like, if you jab him immediately, that's not going to set him off. He's not phased. And he uses his hands to kind of just break contact or even occasionally anticipate the contact, which is nice. Um, he has decent upper body strength to separate from the jams in the contact window, but I think, you know, you need uh, some further development in hand fighting just for NFL strength. And he does widen too much at times and is kind of a little too comfortable just winning in those contested windows and just you know he has more separation ability and you would like to see it because he does have a lot of length and quickness to him it, don't, it doesn't always pop up so you would like to see that get a little bit more consistent um and then when just a physicality note uh I don't think he's as thick as you would like him to be, but he does have some really nice wins through contact. And like I said before, he doesn't get phased when corners kind of just attempt to disrupt him, whether that's you know just getting physical or jabbing or or just pressing him and things like that. And I do think he's able to work his hands through the contact. And he does have the strength to handle those more average size corners. And just, you know, who try to press him through the window. But like I said, for more, some bigger, more physical corners, I do think we need to add some upper body strength to it. Um, body control and concentration, though, um, it's very composed when he's just going to get the ball through contact. He's very comfortable with getting hit through the air and things like that. And kind of just willing to take those hits across the middle if you need him to. That's not something he shies away from. Um, I, I do think he needs to do a better job just against press alignments in terms of surrendering less ground. But I think that, once again, can come with just adding some more uppy, up, upper body strength. Because he is very lengthy and he's kind of lean. So maybe you add some more muscle mass up top. Maybe you see a little less of that happen and can lose positioning at times on those 50-50 balls just given the thin and upright kind of frame that he has and can get boxed out by you know just smarter or bigger corners like that just thicker corners you know like uh like xavier rhodes he's a big dude i know he just left but that's thicker corners like that can kind of box him out even though they're not necessarily taller they are thicker more dense he can't move through them kind of thing um his hands um i feel like there isn't really anything he can't catch outside his frame which is really nice and 
it doesn't really matter if he's elevating or dropping or it's you know it's behind him it's in front of him it, it really doesn't matter it, he he can catch it and drops can come when he kind of gets lazy with things that is a little bit of a concern of mine um because sometimes he won't reach with his full extension ex extension my bad um or he you know kind of claps his hands sometimes kind of like looks up the field just Book, and then the ball's on the ground. I do see that a little bit. And uh, also, if he's running like... I, I've noticed sometimes when he's running a slant or like a shallow cross or something like that, that's kind of like, you know, pretty boring for most receivers. I, I found he kind of loses interest at times and it'll kind of get lazy with the route. Um, so I do think that's a major concern with him. But... Uh, yeah, the hands themselves, when he's focused, are great. He has some of the best hands in this class, I think, when he's focused. But you need him to be focused all of the time, which is kind of the key with him. So, functional athleticism. Uh, he's a multi-sport athlete. That does show. Um, he was a track sprinter guy and a basketball player back in his high school days. And he has diligent footwork at the line of scrimmage and understands how to just work on the balls of his feet to kind of maximize his quickness and his explosiveness. So that's good. Um, he has great leaping ability and can achieve like really good height from weird platforms. So he kind of just elevate from anywhere as long as that's pretty much it. But... I don't think he's overly quick or agile, but given the size, I think he is more than agile and quick enough for what he is. Um, not that he's he's maybe not like Tyreek Hill, but he's certainly not bad. And um, run after the catch ability, um, I, I don't know if he's a special kind of rack receiver, but I, I think he has enough explosiveness to just challenge pursuit angles on the sideline but kind of rarely breaks away since he can't accelerate as fast as some of these you know smaller guys that aren't as you know upright as him so that can kind of limit that a little bit and he can be kind of a tough tackle for some of the smaller d-backs down there just because when working at full speed due to his strength it kind of can just run over some guys um but I, he doesn't really love to, you know, lower his shoulders and try to kill a defender with that. Um, he oftentimes will just kind of, you know, go right out of bounds, avoid the hit, which is fine. Um, and his contact balance, I think, is probably better than his elusiveness, I would say. So for the most part, he can get you some extra yards, but I don't think he's going to be, you know, taking jet sweeps. No, not, nothing too insane there um what is insane though is his catch radius and i think it's very ideal for just like oh throw it up and get it that's our guy and if you throw it up like just along those sidelines amazing body control and it's almost like to a cartoonish level at times and just because he also has the hand strength and the length and it's it's just really hard to defend <laughs> so but he does drop quickly for lower balls, like kind of those underthrown balls. He will drop quickly and successful catching it while falling and diving. And with those comebacks and in-breaking routes, he doesn't really mind that. He's really good at that. And it's kind of like when the ball is in the air, it's kind of just his. It's like, oh, it's only him and the ball. That's it. It's, it's basically his ball. That's how he kind of treats it, which is really, really nice. And he's not ever disturbed by, you know, the defender's bodies in the way. He doesn't really care about that. And he just kind of, you know, he makes the necessary adjustments to the throw. And just, you know, he's able to catch it. And, yeah, at the ideal leverage point. So he's always kind of at the highest extension of it. And he has a rip away technique, which is also good. Because, you know, defensive backs, as they're, you know, in the air trying to get the ball out, they do try to rip it away. So we kind of just, it's kind of an aggressive tuck, so to speak. You aggressively tuck it while you're falling to the ground. All of a sudden, the defensive back can't rip it out. It does that very well. 
and yeah, just great sideline awareness in combination with just the physical gifts that he has. It's almost unfair if he's one on one on the sideline, you just throw a jump ball his way. So that's good. Um, his tracking and adjusting, um, he does declare for the ball late and does a great job just maintaining the leverage against his opponent. So well, that kind of keeps the window open for as long as possible, which is really good. And yeah, manages to kind of just nicely kind of go on to the balls to intercept it, like on the like he kind of adjusts to that flight path properly, and. You know, just with leverage and extension, he's able to just to make, you know, late ball adjustments if he does lose the positioning. Um, I think his just his catch radius and his tracking and adjusting as a whole is probably some of his best traits. And that kind of makes him really nice as both a red zone target and just if you need to kind of make a play in like a contested catch situation, this is one of the guys you want. And, yeah, he'll just kind of go up and make a play. And finally, when we come to blocking, um, once again, uh, I think you need to add some mass to his frame because I, I do think he could use an extra 5 to 10 pounds up top just to be better in some of these areas. But it it's not a bad effort. Because he does bring, you know, velocity into the contact point when looking to create the displacement. And he does have some really good hustle when, you know, to get after it, right? And even when it's kind of like he's not the essential integral part of the block or the play or anything like that, you still kind of see him doing it. And he has the ability to kind of just drive smaller players with locked-in elbows. And, you know, he has a good drive on him, so... That's good. And more often than not, it kind of fights to, you know, a you know, stalemate with leverage. And, you know, his downfield hustle when blocking, you know, down the field is kind of on an average level, I would say. But overall, he isn't really half bad at blocking. Um, he's better than some receivers. Like the last one I went over with T. Higgins, he's certainly better than him, and he has some of the same limitations. Just I think Denzel Mims is probably... Uh, more boomer bust than a one T Higgins, but they're very similar in how you would use them. Just this one's more physically gifted with Higgins kind of, he's very good at what he does fundamentally. And you kind of need to teach this guy to, you know, focus some more on some of those routes and kind of just kind of, you know, teach him some of the things. Maybe, you know, get him into an NFL weight room, kind of things like that. Um, so he definitely has higher upside, but yeah, I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, any suggestions on who else I should, you know, go over? Gladly appreciated, as is liking and subscribing. And until next time, I bet you all do.